greenhouse gas reductions. Uh, for 2035 to 2045. So, and when we look at those actions, they get more expensive and they also get fewer greenhouse gas reductions over that period of time. So we really need to look at really ambitious and aggressive actions if we do choose to align ourselves with a state goal. Uh, that's still something that's being decided right now. That's a um, you know political decision much, much higher than me. And that's also a part of this feedback process for our public engagement. Um, so now centering climate equity. So that first climate action plan, the 2015 plan, gave us an opportunity to really uh, look at how the city is already doing with climate equity and see what we need to do to address it. So what we did was um, in 2019, we developed our climate equity index. So we looked at 38 indicators of uh, what we're calling access to opportunity. Sorry, you might be able to hear sirens in the background, so just excuse that, um, of access to opportunity. And those included walkability of a neighborhood, so access to grocery stores or hospitals, um, access to parks. It also looked at uh, asthma rates, childhood mortality rates, um, heart attack, asthma. You can find that full list of the 30, 38 indicators on our website, and that's another link I'll drop in the chat in a second. And what we were able to find from that is really where we need to target the most of our resources so that we can address these historical disparities and historical inequities that our region and all, almost all cities have faced. So we had developed this with our climate, our equity stakeholder working group that's comprised of 35 community-based organizations that are part of these, what we call communities of concern. So in addition to developing this climate equity index, we also defined climate equity. That way we as a city know what the goal is that we're working toward. So climate equity as defined by our equity stakeholder working group is addressing historical inequity suffered by people of color, allowing everyone to fairly share the same benefits and burdens from climate solutions and attain full equal access to opportunities regardless of one's background or identity. So that's really what we're striving to accomplish with this climate action plan update. And then finally, talking again about those additional benefits. So what should we monitor and quantify moving forward? That way we can really tell the full story of what San Diego is doing in climate action. So these are what we have on our radar for the additional benefits that we would like to include as tracking moving forward, improved air quality, active and healthy lifestyles, safe routes for walking and bicycling, savings on energy and water bills, lower transportation costs, work for development and quality jobs, and improve natural spaces. Um, but that's something as I ask the questions to this group, I want to hear from you as well as what's important to you that you want to see us monitor and track. So this is our timeline. Um, you know, it's been thrown into the air a hundred times by different pandemics or administration changes, everything that's going on. Um, but as I said, we started that learning process. So hearing from the community what they want out of the climate action plan in March of 2020 last year. Um, we definitely had to rethink all of our engagement. Um, so, and I'll go into a little bit more detail what exactly we've done to date. Um, so now we've collected uh, responses from over 2,600 participants across the city, and we're starting to create the draft. We're working with internal city departments to really finalize what actions we need to do to get to a more ambitious GHG reduction target. We're hoping to have a draft for review in the fall timeframe, um, if all goes according to plan. And then that draft would go through another process of public review, in which case I would love to come back and present it again to the group and go into even more detail with that plan. Uh, with the goal being that we would have a final plan adopted by council in early 2022. So as we continue our engagement and outreach and as we've learned from people or heard from people, last year we held a digital survey that had about 1800 responses. We have an Our Climate, Our Future newsletter. You can sign up on that link at the bottom. It's a once a month newsletter that tells you about the different engagement activities that we have happening and how the city is doing with implementation of our current climate action plan. We also, another siren, sorry, I live right next to a fire station. Uh, we also hosted a series of 12 public forums, including one in each council district last October um, through February, where we heard from over 500 residents about what they want to see the climate action plan tackle in their, their neighborhoods. Uh, we did a partnership with the library for a youth activity book. That was my favorite part where we distributed 10,000 copies of a 20 page activity book available in both English and Spanish through the libraries. 
And then we also did more focused direct resident engagement in our communities of concern, partnering with community-based organizations like Casa Familiar, Climate Action Campaign, Urban Sustainability Coalition, Mid-City Can, and an Environmental Health Coalition. This is so that we can really empower and uplift those voices that might not participate in our general city engagement because um, we do either don't speak their language or they just aren't as connected to our channels as others are. Um, and through that, we were able to receive lots of responses and lots of really new great ideas that we might have not otherwise considered. So you can find more information of how to stay involved and how to sign up for that newsletter and everything on that link, which again, I'll drop in the chat in a second. So that leads me um, where I'm going to share my screen now with the questions I have for you all. And then we will get to questions from you because I'm sure everyone is very excited. Um, but if you could, please go to menti.com. You can go on your computer on another window or you can open your phone. Um, and actually I'm having, because of the Zoom controls, I can't see the code that's at the top of there. Um, maybe Linda, are you able to see that? Yes, we can see the code and I'll read it to folks if you can't see it. Yes, excellent, thank you. All right, the code is 65129487. And if anyone needs me to read it again, I will, but it is present on the, um, on the screen. I will and type it in is M-E-N-T-I. Well. Yes. Excellent. Um, so, and this is so that we can hear from everyone, um, even if you feel shy. I know I feel shy during Zoom meetings, if you can believe it. Um, and I don't always like to talk, but we want to hear from everyone and as many people as you, we can. When you imagine a sustainable San Diego, what comes to mind? When you think of the future of San Diego, the ideal that you want for your grandchildren, for the future in general, for you, what do you most want out of it? Um, if you're having a hard time accessing menti.com and typing in that code, you can also put in the chat and I'll uh, get, keep a record of that for later. We'll give everyone a minute. Awesome. I always love seeing these start to come in. Uh, it makes me feel better in case nothing worked. Um, it looks like this font might be a little hard to read, so I'll read everything out as well. So we have landscaping and trees, a sustainable population, a VMT, equity and health, public transit. Not too hot or too, or I'm not sure what that would have been, but clean air and clean water, working from home. I personally love it. And if anyone wants to speak as well, this is definitely a great time if you would like to speak up and um, you know talk further on any of these points. This can be a really nice way to feel really hopeful about everything. And then some new ones have come in, walkable streets, not too dry, that makes sense. Uh, smart planning, smoke-free, Good air, climate protection, I'll give another minute or so on this question before I have another one for you. Yeah, clean air I see in the chat, excellent. People outside, I think I saw. Sometimes once a lot starts coming in, it starts bouncing around. Empty your freeways, air again. I apologize, this is very hard to see. I We had to switch to a different version of this that changed the colors on us. Lots of solar panels, awesome. Adequate water supply, definitely. Less concrete, no fires. And it looks like um, public transit is really coming in with a, from a lot of people, electric buses, that's excellent. True progress, joy, I love that. Desalinated. Excellent. Um, so we have all of our responses. Does anyone want to give maybe one comment on this verbally before we move on to the next question? Okay, excellent. Um, so my next question for you is, 
Um, maybe I should have reversed them, just ended on a positive note, but I'm really interested in what climate change impacts are you most concerned about? Because um, we, again, want to tailor what we do for our actions to really address what is hurting our communities already or what you're worried about hurting your community in the future. And this one does allow you to write a bit of a longer response, I believe, if you would like, so feel free. Um, but so far, excessive heat, definitely wildfires, indifference, urban heat island, biodiversity loss, drought, loss of plant and animal life, availability of food and water, less talk and more action, tree loss, irreversible impacts for ecosystems, flooding, managed retreat, Ocean acidity and temperature changes, stress on people and animals, health concerns and stressors, then loss of habitat and species again, and wildfires and loss of adequate wildlife habitat. Critical infrastructure loss, depression of young people, when we did our, our full public engagement um, and I was categorized in all these answers that we've received over the 2,600 responses we've got, uh, climate anxiety, it was a category I had to create. And that encompassed that feeling of depression, feeling of worry for the, um, for the future. And that was one of our top five responses. Um, so tension between people due to climate change impacts, water and insecurity, water shortages, Okay, I think everyone has had the chance to answer now, judging by the numbers. Um, so any overall thoughts on this before we switch to just questions for me? And then I'll stop sharing the screen in a second. Oh, here, another one came in, climate refugees. Mm -hmm. And then division between groups, economic levels, disparity. Okay, you will be able to keep submitting any answers that you would like, but just for the sake of time and so that I give you all as much time as I can to ask me questions, uh, I'll stop sharing my screen and we can move into a general discussion portion. Um, I'm going to start though by dropping all those links that I talked about in the chat. So, um, and I'll drop my email address as well. And if you have any questions at all after this, if you think of something later, you can always email me and I'll get back to you. To all of the folks here, what I would love to um, do is share uh, this link via uh, email. So if you are signed up as a Stay Cool member, we will send it to our Stay Cool list. And um, that way, if you aren't able to capture it from the chat, you will get it from us uh, via email. We will also be um, putting this, um, uh, this meeting um, on our website. Uh, sorry, I forgot to start recording. That's why I have co-hosts that remembered. So we'll, we'll start, um, we'll have that on our website in a week or so. All right, so if you have a question, please raise your hand and you, everybody can uh, uh, show their faces. You know, you, you don't have to stop your video anymore. It's fine to have everyone, your beautiful faces can shine here. All right, excellent. Okay, and we do ask that you stay muted unless, um, we ask that you stay muted unless um, you are actually asking the question. Okay, all right. So who has a question? Raise your hand. Any questions? Dave Engel has a question. Thank you. Hi, Mariah. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming and presenting here. Um, I have a question. I, I talked to Raul Campillo and I talked to some reps in Joe LaCava's office about 
helping the city out and actually helping the uh, the areas, the sort of rural areas outside of San Diego too. And that's by by putting maybe an addition into the climate action plan that would say establish a baseline for greenhouse gases created by you know unnecessary animal products, and say you know you have a baseline for uh, 2020, and then for the amount less animal products that we use or buy actually in 2021, we get a carbon a greenhouse gas carbon offset for the amount less, you know, and then conversely, if we use more, then we get charged for more. But what it does, it, it would give the city incentive to get the word out that animal agriculture is, is putting out way too much greenhouse gas. And even though we're not creating it here, we are accountable for it here because without us, the demand for it here, they're not creating it in the Central Valley and the Imperial Valley. Just wanted to get your, your response to that. Yeah, so the uh, San Diego County Climate Collaborative, the Regional Climate Collaborative, excuse me, uh, they are looking into what a regional offset program, like what you're describing, could look like. Um, currently, the accounting and the science, it just makes it hard to have a qualified cap like we have that is CEQA bound with the kind of offset program. Uh, so that's the current research that the San Diego Foundation, University of San Diego, and that Regional Climate Collaborative are embarking on. Um, so those would be great organizations to um, pitch that to and to talk to more. Great. And I can drop their links in the chat as well. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I have a question if no one else is uh, raising their hand. Is anyone else raising their hand? No. Nope. Um, I, I have uh, two questions. Um, the first question is, uh, there, there is a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and I am so happy. Um, however, I, I know a lot of those reductions are actually from state and, and federal mandates like the you know, Title 24 updates and the renewable portfolio mandate so that the energy that we get from the grid is a lot cleaner. And uh, we have the clean uh, fuel um, uh, cafe standards, not clean fuel, the cafe standards. So when you look at the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, can you see how much of that is from state and federal in general and how much is actually from city um, opportunities? Definitely. Um, I would encourage you to d dive into the appendix for the climate action plan. Uh, you might be one of maybe three people who have done that. I just dropped the link in the chat as well. Um, but within that, you can get really into the details of all of those 17 actions and what we track for our greenhouse gas reductions and the exact greenhouse gas reductions associated with each of that. And then you can compare those state and federal actions, the um, actions for just our renewable energy portfolio to the actual actions of the city. Sorry, Linda. Can you give just a um, just a general idea? Is that I'm I'm assuming the majority is from state and federal actions, right? Yeah, I don't have that on me right now as far as a breakdown from it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I can look further into the appendix as well. Okay, I'll hold my other question because we have other people with the hands up. Hi, um, I have my hand up. Do you want? Was I the one you were holding your other question for? Yeah, Milana. Yeah, Milena. Um, I have uh, a question about the what I perceive as the omission of the ocean and the beaches and the um, few lagoons that we have left. Uh, in the action plan. I looked at the action plan in a class that I was in back in, when it, it first came out in 2015, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. So has, has the ocean been addressed? So that's definitely something am that I, we're looking, oh, sorry? Or am I missing something? You know, I don't, I don't know. 
So that's definitely something that we're looking to expand more into for that update that we're undergoing right now. Um, mm -hmm. But you are right, the climate action plan really only focuses on greenhouse gas reductions. There are other citywide plans like the watershed urban management plan that focus on stormwater pollution and our watershed health overall. Um, but we do have that very specific uh, lens for the climate action plan, looking at those greenhouse gas reductions. And right now we're looking to see how we can quantify more of those stormwater issues and greenhouse and uh, green infrastructure, because we know that there are GHG reductions associated with those actions, but there isn't a lot of uh, current science around it to really be able to quantify what that is. So that's what we're also working with University of San Diego on right now to be able to incorporate into the update. And that's another plan that I can drop a link for, tons of links today, uh, that urban watershed management protection plan. Okay, so is what you're saying that, um, okay, we're focused on the emissions, but the emissions affect lots of other things. It's, it's not just uh, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, because that affects the oceans, that affects the acidity of the oceans, it affects the, um, the amount of CO2 that the oceans can actually hold on to. Uh, I guess I'm, I, maybe I need to read something more basic. Um, can you steer me somewhere to give me a better idea of how the action plan was, at, was put together? Um. Sure. There's the, the action plan itself, which is, I'll drop the link in the chat again. Um, that might be the best thing that you're looking for to address your question, the 2015 climate action plan. And then also that urban watershed, uh, urban water management plan that I dropped a link to as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is Christine. So I put a question in the chat. Um, basically, at this point, from your perspective, what are the biggest challenges with implementation of the cap or the process? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, so 55% of those GHGs that we're looking to reduce are within our transportation sector. So the biggest challenge really is getting people out of single occupancy gas powered vehicles and increasing the mode shares for, for walking, for bicycling, for using public transit, or also in the future even, or the future being next year, electric vehicles. Um, so, and that incorporates so much uh, infrastructure that needs to change, behavior changes that need to be made, collaboration between us, between MTS, between SANDAG, uh, federal funding, state funding. So there's so many factors for the transportation sector. It's definitely the one of the most challenging to address while also having the most, uh, you know, over half of our overall GHG emissions. Can I go ahead? Because uh, it piggybacks right off of what you were just saying. Um, it, when city governments and any kind of government gets involved in things, a lot of times everything is kept at this level up there. And when it comes to the everyday people, there's a big gap. So there's all these programs and, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, this corporation is taking care of it or that city department is taking care of it. And I'm wondering how uh, San Diego or whether San Diego plans on trying to bring uh, some actions down to the everyday person level. And that's one question. And then the second question in the transportation sector, it's gonna take a while to get everybody out of their cars and not everybody is gonna get out of their cars. Um, and I, I'm thinking of people who are older, who um, you know can't just jump on a bike and ride down you know, the street to a store or people who live further out from the core of the city who, um, you know, where there's hills or, um, you know, traffic's flying by on a freeway or a uh, 50 mile an hour boulevard or um, vehicles such as service vehicles for, you know, Cox or Spectrum or your local plumber. These are vans or trucks. Um, and a lot of times they'll sit in their vans and trucks and update their notes for their the call they just made for up to who knows 15 minutes i know they do this in front of my house so it's a, it's a problem for me um with their windows up and their engines idling 
And, you know, it's a beautiful 73 degree day. So it's a habit. And how, how can San Diego address those kinds of habits? And I'll mention one more. Uh, people do it all the time. They come out of the grocery store, they jump in the car, they turn it on, and then they check their phones. And they're sitting there while they're reading texts and things like that. So these are kind of some, to me, simple things to start accentuating while we're trying to get the transportation sector up to speed in terms of electric vehicles and things like that. And I was wondering if San Diego has any plans to have some programs that are implementable at kind of like the street level or the neighborhood level, um, you know, by approaching neighbors outside of the core of the neighborhoods outside of the core of the cities, or even HOAs or property management or association management companies and getting them to get their communities engaged somehow. It was it's a long question, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, that's okay. It sounds like um, what I'm kind of hearing from you is you'd be more interested in seeing more education outreach programs. Is that correct? Maybe that's it, but also some opportunities to take some action. In other mm -hmm. words, if you educate and then explain how in daily lives and then possibly even incentivize. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so those are really great questions and really great po points that you raise. And again, that's what I would maybe kind of flip that back on you as the um, as we're going through this engagement process for the climate action plan update, we are looking to hear what actions you would want included in the climate action plan. So if you do have specific ideas for what you can see would really be able to target the individual um, to make those behavior changes, I would love to hear them. And that can also be a later thing, like I said, I put my email in the chat, so you can always send me an email with that. Um, but definitely looking, that's why when I came up with Our Climate, Our Future, I do really want the Climate Action Plan update to say and show that it's not, it's very much about what the city can do as far as infrastructure and politics, but it is also that implementing the climate action fully would necessitate behavior change from all of us. It's our climate and our future. So um, I, I'm definitely with you here. That's my background is more in that behavior change thinking, but how to make it, um, how to balance the carrots and the sticks, how to make it more natural for people. Um, it's like what you're saying about, uh, you know, not everyone can hop on a bike, um, you know, age disability, I barely know how to ride a bike. Um, definitely, but if we had better infrastructure, if we had uh, safer areas, then you might, I would definitely feel more comfortable hopping in a bike. So it's just balancing that of what can the city do to make, to help make people make the right choices and make those choices more comfortable for them. And I'd like to inter interject just for a moment. At the end of this, Stay Cool wants to capture a lot of these comments and Jan, you made a good one, all of you have but we're going to write a letter to the city on behalf of Stay Cool and try to you know, bring together all of these great ideas and um, send, them to the, send them to the city. So you can write it on your own as well, but we'd like to also incorporate it into a letter from Stay Cool. And David uh, Ingle, I think, did you, did you wanna? Yes, David Ingle is next and then Christine, you can have another turn. Yeah, hi. Uh... Oh, soon. Okay. Transportation, as you mentioned, is a is a huge part of the greenhouse gas pollution that we have. And I'm wondering, in your model of of uh, future reductions, how much are you depending upon uh, the Sandag transportation plan being completed and then implemented? Uh, and what happens if it isn't? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So the tw or which regional transfer or what year of the regional transportation plan are you referring to? The one that's being worked on right now. Yeah. So the current climate action plan doesn't incorporate that current one because it wasn't developed yet at the time. Um, but for our update, we are definitely working closely with Sandag to be able to use their best available data and also their projections for the future of San Diego as we work on our own uh, quantification for GHGs. So, so it would just be from 2035 forward then, is that yes. right? Yeah. Um, and we're definitely, we collaborate constantly, it feels like with Sandag because we, 
at the city don't necessarily do those projections that Sandbag really specializes in. So we need to work closely with them in order to understand how the city is being planned out for the future. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay, thank you. I think Sue Randerson was first and then we'll go back to Christine. Sue, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand earlier. Okay, I, I didn't know how to write anything in. I'm on my cell phone, so I don't know how to do all those things. So totally. I, it would be I, a little hard. Yeah, I have two questions and one is about um, transportation is probably my number one concern too. And I just want to um, say uh, among the things you'd like to see in San Diego, that was what I would put in something about transportation. And um, I would like to see um, the, the action plan uh, uh, get into more areas of the community because it does not cover all of San Diego the way it now it is. It's really not feasible for people to take trans public transportation. So you're not going to get people out of their cars if they can't, you know, get somewhere fairly quickly. Two hours each way is not such a good thing. So I'm just really that's my number one thing. And the other thing is um, that uh, I wondered if you are doing anything about carbon sequestration in the lagoons, such as in Mission Bay, is that part of the plan? Because yeah, that's actually the lagoon is a good place for carbon sequestration. Yeah, that's a great question. So we do work with University of San Diego. I've referenced them a couple of times. They We partner with EPIC, uh, Energy Policy Initiative Center, and they are the scientists that handle all of our quantifications and then the um, GHG calculations for the climate action plan. Right now they are researching how to quantify the sequestration of San Diego's marshes. They're also looking into the quantification of green infrastructure. Um, so that's a little bit about what Milan asked earlier of um, that stormwater pollution protection. Um, so we're looking into how we can capture that into the climate action plan update. It just is um, a little complicated because again of that legally binding aspect of our climate action plan. We really need to be able to show how much marshland results in how many GHG reductions. And right now the science isn't quite there, um, but we're working with Epic on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And Linda, just so you know, my, my question, I raised my hand and then I lowered it. I just wanted to make sure that whatever we're putting in the chat is going to get captured. So you, you spoke to that. So thank you. Carolyn, got a question? Oh. Yeah, Carolyn. We'll call who was called on? I'm sorry. Car Caroline. 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 OK, I just had two minor questions. One was about, I read that San Diego is, uh, has a big tree planting uh, thing going now. And I'm wondering if, uh, if that has spread to the out, outer communities outside of San Diego City. Um, so if, if I, I'm not sure I understand your question. So the city of San Diego, if, you're referring to what we're doing for tree planting, it would just be within the city boundaries for San Diego because um, we are not the county. So we, we're just the city. So we only have jurisdiction over the neighborhoods within the city of San Diego. And it would be the different cities or the county that would be planting trees outside of that. Um, but we do have, um, we did recently receive a grant for tree planting in the city of San Diego, um, really focused on our communities of concern. So there has been uh, some movement in tree planting we can always use more. Okay, and my other question was, um, do, uh, do we anywhere address the building um, uh, structures and how they're built and that sort of thing in terms of the impact on the environment? I just recently watched uh, something about the making of concrete and mm -hmm. it's uh, very uh, rich, of, full of CO2. And so I'm, I'm just wondering if, if our plan addresses how we're building buildings and the density yeah. of the buildings. Yeah, excellent. Um, that is something that we're looking into for the update of the plan. And again, that just goes back to what can we quantify and what's happening within the city boundaries because that for the city's climate action plan, that's what we're limited to. Um, so we do look at different permits or different, um, not permits, but different building code changes that we can make so that when buildings are built in the future in the city of San Diego, they can be held to high standards. 
students. Um, and we're looking to see what we should incorporate for that in order to stay in line with where the state is with their building code updates and go even potentially more ambitious than that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Milana? Milena? Thank you. Milena, very good. Milena, sorry, okay. you know, we've had Milana, Milanias for a long time, so I Oh, please, <laughs> please. I, I was around for a lot longer than her and hopefully will be. Anyway, I have a couple additional questions. You've mentioned um, Mariah USD a couple of times. Do you do any work with SIO? Can you, I'm just not familiar with that acronym right now. Oh, I'm sorry, Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yes, we, we've we worked with Scripps. Um, we've talked to uh, professors at Scripps. Um, we've had quite a few interns from Scripps. So yes, we're closely associated with them as well. Okay, good. Um, and the second question had to do with um, coordination between the City of San Diego Climate Action Plan and the action plan that the county has, as well as the um, smaller communities, many of which are adjacent to uh, the city, if there's coordination between those entities and their plans. Definitely. So um, the different leaders from those cities, uh, specifically within the city staff on sustainability, meet through the Regional Climate Collaborative. And we okay. work consistently. Um, I, it's on sharing best practices, sharing what we're learning, sharing what we're working on, um, looking to each other to make sure that we, you know, there's a little bit of competition there, but we want to make sure that we're all moving in uh, tandem. So we are definitely very collaborative with the other cities. Okay, are there any things that you can think of that have been problematic? I guess the thing that comes to my mind is the difference uh, between the, the actions that Del Mar wants to take regarding sea level rise versus what's happening in Imperial Beach. I guess it's, um, I used to know the words, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Imperial Beach is getting ready to move, you know, move people out of harm's way and their, their homes. Whereas Del Mar, at least the last thing I heard, the people there don't want to do that. They yeah. want everything to be buttressed so they can stay on the beach. Yeah, so I, I would you mean by problematic as far as collaboration? Well, are there any, are there any real, um, you said there's some competition, but I'm wondering oh. if there are any real um, uh, completely different ideas about how to address a particular issue. Yeah, okay, well, definitely. And that a lot of it goes to the political leadership of every city being different and having different priorities and different communities that they have to serve. Um, just to kind of maybe redirect that a little bit, there's another plan that's happening, um, an update process that's happening concurrently, which is the city's resilient San Diego plan, resilient SD. I just dropped that link in the chat. It's about three up right now. Um, so that plan is looking on how do we adapt to climate change? So we're focused on how, or the climate action plan, what I'm, uh, focus on what I work on is how to mitigate those greenhouse gas emissions. That plan is how do we adapt to it. Um, so I put the link there and I would really advise um, sending them an email, getting in touch with them too, because that would be a great presentation to have to this group as well. That's awesome. Um, one of the things, uh, does somebody else raise their hand or can I speak? Oh, Laura. Oh, when you're done. When no, you go <laughs> first. I already asked a question, you go first. Um, yeah, I wanted to go back to transportation and um, I wonder, you said you're gonna develop new metrics for the climate action plan. And uh, I was wondering if there's going to be a new metric about the width of the streets, you know, the city streets. I know for many years, San Diego traffic engineers built overly wide streets. It was all designed for the car. And you would think by now we've sort of changed that, but I notice uh, I live in Bay Park and we have a new trolley line on Marina. 
and the recommendation was to make that that street narrow so it's you know people could walk to the transit station but a few residents uh, complained and wanted the street to be wider so they you know the city approved it will the climate action plan have any teeth to keep our streets you know safer because it the, the worst thing for uh, people who want to bike or walk is the speed people are driving. And if you have a really wide street, people are just driving really fast. Mm -hmm. So if there was a metric about that in the climate action plan. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and some of that does have to do with fire code. Um, so whether or not ambulances and fire trucks can get through. Um, but there's definitely room for that. And that's one of the things that we're going to have to look at um, just as, like I uh, said during that slide on the PowerPoint, when we get to that 2035 to 2045 range, we really need to come up with ambitious and innovative ways to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so at this point, nothing is on the table and we're, or nothing is off the table, I should say. And we're working with our staff to see what is really feasible that we could achieve. Um, okay. Oh, can I have a quick, yeah. just one quick question? Um, yeah. Is the city um, working with the neighborhood community councils on this? I mean, is there a coordination effort to get them involved? Because, you know, they have the ability to bring it down to a lower level, to a, a neighborhood level. Yeah. Um, so that will come likely when we have the draft in, uh, in hand and when we go out to present to the different groups with the draft. Um, but yeah. So that's one one of our next steps. Okay, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. No, thank you. No, no, that's great. That's great. Um, when she said that, and to kind of get to Laura's point, I know that you're developing the 2035, 2050 um, aspect of the plan, but a lot of these suggestions shouldn't wait till 2035. And so, what opportunities are there to integrate some of these great ideas? Uh, into the existing plan and, you know, new metrics into the existing plan. I, I know it's not in concrete. So there are some, um, there are some opportunities, I would think, to change some of the things and, you know, make it more of a living document than something that was set in stone. Mm. Um, so the update process is how we're changing the plan. So we do need to go through um, the full city process, the full engagement process, external, internal, in order to change the plan. But the plan doesn't limit different departments from moving and being more ambitious on different actions that they work on. It doesn't limit us from being more ambitious than what the current plan is. So um, updating the plan is what we're doing to be able to change the plan, but there's definitely a lot of room for working with the different departments, working with the other plans that are in development. There's the resilient plan, like I mentioned, there's also the mobility action plan. Um, I'll drop another link in the chat, of course. Um, so there's other ways to, and the bicycle master plan. So there's a lot, uh, the general plan, the housing element, the different city uh, city plans, the community plan updates, I mean. So there's a lot going on that you can definitely engage with to be able to make the uh, other changes as well. Does that help? To update, so I guess I'm just saying to update the current plan so that the sustainability department then can say to, for example, um, the building department, I forget what they're called now, um, you know, why don't we think about using narrower streets as opposed to building long, larger streets? That's that's kind of what I'm asking, not 2035, 2050, but right now, if you get these, um, if you get, you know, comments from folks that are doable or at least um, actionable at this point in time, is the sustainability department going to, you know, do that kind of outreach now for, today as opposed to waiting till 2035 that's really my question definitely so yeah so that mechanism wouldn't be through changing the current plan in pieces um that we also are in 
through the implementation of the current climate action plan, we have regular sustainability roundtables. We meet with the departments regularly. We share with them what we're hearing from our engagement so far uh, and brainstorm with them more ways that they can implement the current climate action plan, but also go further than that. Um, so yes, yeah, definitely that's happening. It just isn't, we're not changing aspects of the current climate action plan as we go along. We're looking at a full update. Okay, and I have one more question before I go to Bob and it's a really quick question. Um, Just to, um, I do need to leave at 7.30, so um, okay. this will probably Bob. be the go last question. Okay. okay, go to Bob. Okay, yeah, one of the, I think one of the, the really widely discussed approaches to reducing GHG in cities um, in the near term is building electrification. In other words, shifting from the use of natural gas in homes and businesses and churches and other um, types of buildings. And a lot of cities across the state now are considering uh, policies and regulations that would actually require existing homes to be converted to all electric uh, in a, a more, a quicker manner than is currently the case, as well as requiring all new homes and buildings to be built using um, electricity. Has the city of San Diego done work to quantify the benefits that that might lead to? And is that something that you um, are recommending to be strongly considered in this plan update? That's something that we're definitely looking at, um, especially, like I said, that's something that we will have to include in order to have a more ambitious greenhouse gas reduction goal. Um, we're anticipating that that is going to need a lot of community support and that we're going to have to have a lot of conversations with the public to have um, uh, support around that. So um, again, I would uh, highly recommend in the letter that you are all sending, if that if that is something that this group would be interested in recommending, the more we can show that there is community support for that, the better. Yeah. And again, I'm so sorry. Um, so I'm going to drop my email in the chat again, and any further questions I can take at or msaldania at sandiego.gov. Uh, and this has been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank you. much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you really all. It's, it really it. has been so nice. And if there's anyone that wants to stay on to quantify uh, some of the things that we want to include in our letter, please stay on. Mariah, go back to your life. It's 7.30 and we appreciate your time. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Have a really great night and uh, right. enjoy your weekend, everyone. Stay safe. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so um, to all of us that are on the call, um, I took some notes and I, I'm sure that others took notes as well um, in terms of the types of things that we may include in our stay cool um, letter. Um, I know that we, just FYI, that there is an anti-idling ordinance for trucks, but not for cars. So that's something we can look at. Um, uh, the carbon sequestration in the lagoon, I'm not sure that is um, something that they're actually going to be able to include in a climate action plan unless they can get some really good numbers, but we'll encourage them to work with USD and EPIC, Scott Anders and Nomeni Silva Sen to, to um, work on that. Um, the building electrification, Bob, thank you so much for that. Um, are they going to, you know, look at that and look at making that something that happens sooner rather than later? Um, narrower streets are good. Um, green building and code changes. The state, as you guys probably all know, have green building standards, but the cities can make them much more uh, ambitious. So that's something you know, that that's certainly something that they can do as well. So those are the notes that I took. I'm just curious what other people heard or want, you know, us to consider as part of our stay cool letter. Tree planting came up. What was that? Tree planting. Where are they just getting the water to plant trees? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the, the purple line only goes so far, unfortunately. And so, you know, downtown, it's not downtown. So that's all potable water. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time in Arizona and they have figured out how to grow shade trees um, 
with minimal water. I think I think we need to look at our our tree, our palette of trees that we use okay. here in San Diego uh, more carefully. I, it's not going to be simple, but I think yeah. It's Okay, so Linda, notice that we have Ann Faggy on still. I see that. I saw Ann. <laughs> so no, I'd be glad to work about trees. Yeah, I'd be glad to work with you on that. First of all, if you if you have um, trees in your landscaping and you water them, they only take watering deeply once a month in those months we don't have rain. And then secondly, if you've got a shaded yard, the rest of your landscaping just doesn't need as much water. Yeah. yeah and you right. deeply once a month, that could be equivalent to one or two showers. Um, you know, 15 gallons. So, and when you think about all the benefits, it's just, it's the math is just overwhelming. And somehow we keep thinking that we, we can't do that. So would love to work with you all in, um, especially as people want to do some kind of climate action yeah. That, yeah, that they can see directly. Well, they can put a tree in their backyard. Yeah. There's 35 bucks for a tree yeah. and you're going to water it and your kids can water it or whatever. So I just think it's one of those campaigns that, I'd love to work a little bit more with you and others on. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be a street tree right. that you sign your life away on like you would with the city. So something a lot simpler. Yeah. And thank hey, you so much. And thank you for being on. Others? Always. Hey, hey, Linda, this is more like a logistics thing. Make sure you cut and paste the chat so you don't lose all those great comments. Oh, like of course. Before of course. You... I did notice that there was a lot being typed that wasn't being said. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Oh, well, you know, I, yeah, I uh, think going back to what Dave Dave Engel said about um, food systems more generally, I, I do mm -hmm. believe there are new ideas out there about how uh, cities can uh, promote uh, food system approaches that can lead to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. I, I don't know all the details, but it just seems to me that we ought to, you know, make sure we, we keep that in the conversation as well. You know, back in the day when I was working on the climate action plan, so probably 2012 to 2014, um, San Francisco really did a great job of including food systems in their climate action plan because they said just based on, you know, the, the growing the food, the purchasing the transportation, you know, to bring the food from all kinds of different places. And then the waste in the food right. was huge in terms right. of greenhouse gas emissions. I know that the environmental services department with the city of San Diego is uh, working on the zero waste for food and all of that. But um, I do think that needs to be highlighted in the climate action plan because they don't do any of the stuff. I mean, the sustainability department doesn't do it. They put the plan together, but all the other departments at the city are actually the ones that do the implementation of it. Um, and so that, I, I don't know that I saw food systems in their climate action plan. And I think that would be a great idea. Thank you, Bob. And, and thank you, Dave. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Awesome. Great people. Hey. That was a, I like interactions like this. This was great. Yeah, and I truly was... do appreciate all of you guys being here. Um, I will, um, I will end the meeting now. So thank you <laughs> for stay cool for grandkids. You too can have a cool shirt. Um, take good care and we'll talk again later. Bye. All right. Thank Thanks. you so much. Linda. Bye everybody. Good, good, good to see you all. Take, take care. care.